The first thing which I want all of my SME, SME uh, members to, rem to, to, to remember is world is flat and almost the world clock has become zero. Everyone has now become equalized. Almost every one of us have become equalized. So it's like starting our life from zero again. Assuming sometimes we believe, sometimes we think, oh, if I was a small child, how would I have started my life? It's like that. We have, we have all become a small child. We need to restart our life. Some of us are in sectors where perhaps we don't need to restart, but God has been fortunate. We are in a sector like, say, pharmaceutical sector. You are manufacturing medicine or helping in the manufacturing of medicine. You are perhaps already in the right sector. Even there, changes are going to take place. Happy to discuss it later. But assuming for a moment you're in a restaurant business, things are going to change. And if I now get stuck in restaurant business and thinking, oh, things are going to change in three months and six months time, one year's time, then we are perhaps in a fool's paradise. So my first my first suggestion to all of you is, not suggestion perhaps, <laughs> an advice, that all of us have to reinvent ourselves in our mind. Let's not get stuck in what we were doing. Yes, it is very difficult to reinvent ourselves. It's not easy. We have to tell our children to do so in their studies. Children or students who are studying, they have to reinvent themselves as to what they've studied so far. We, the businessmen, have to reinvest our, reinvent ourselves as to how we are doing business. In our lives, we have to reinvent ourselves as to how we used to conduct our life, whether it's entertainment, meeting people, greeting, drinking, eating, whatever. So I have five suggestions to make, ladies and gentlemen. It's very difficult, I know. All of us here are definitely suffering um, tremendously because of lack of cash and lack of funds. There's so much uncertainty in front of us, and at a time like this, perhaps a little brainstorming might help. I have five suggestions to make. The first suggestion, ladies and gentlemen, is um, we, the businessmen, do things for selling. We make something, we produce something, we service something for selling. Is there a market for it, for it anymore? So first try to see that the sector I am, are there customers still, are there consumers still to make, to buy my product or buy my service? So the first aspect which needs to be considered. Is the voice clear just to ask everyone? Yes, it's clear. Yes, it's clear. Yes, it's clear. Okay, 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 okay. Now, uh, maybe I'll come a little closer. Okay, so the first aspect we need to understand is, is there a customer for the, my business? I gave an example of restaurants. The restaurant business perhaps will be one of the most affected because where, where people may not, with, with the social distancing concept in mind, people may not go to the restaurants as much they used to be earlier. Now, when people stop eating, no, the answer is no, they're not going to stop eating. So what is the business opportunity? Can I therefore serve or service people from my home or from my cloud kitchen, which will be COVID compliant? Now, therefore, my so-called restaurant business has to be rejigged or rejigged up and the model has to be changed, get into the food business itself, but we struggle ourselves to go into another model. Perhaps there is a method in the madness there. So, ladies and gentlemen, the first aspect we need to think, is there a market, is there something, is there a customer, and can I still sell? That's number one. And not in another priority, but I'll try, try to tell us business number the five things we need to think of for ourselves so that we can reinvent ourselves. The second is that we sell, and if you go a little backwards, we need to produce, we need to manufacture. If we don't produce, we don't manufacture something, we do, don't do something, no one buys something. So we do value addition. Now, are we doing the value addition the right way? Is my technology correct? Now, whenever the word technology comes in, many a times we think, oh, it's high tech, I'm an MSME, I don't have technology. Ladies and gentlemen, of course you have a technology. You do something special, that's why if when you buy something for 100, you can sell for 150. So someone is going to give you that 50 rupees extra because 
um, because you are you are doing something. We are doing one value addition. This value addition, ladies and gentlemen, is going to significantly change again the method because of social distancing. Maybe our factories have to be much more opened up. We may not be able to um, employ all the people we had uh, because we have to reduce our cost. The cost reduction we need. Um, taking advantage of some second-hand technology. Just because it's technology second-hand doesn't mean the technology outdated. It's just that my cost is less. So please look at the way you are producing, whether it's service or goods. Do look at the way the way we are doing so that we are cost competitive. Ladies and gentlemen, one good news is India is likely to be the sourcing hub of the world. China will no longer trust, be trusted. Even every child in the world knows that the COVID has come from that country. And therefore, will the food products, will the products of all what the Chinese people were su supplying, will it continue? I doubt very much. And that's an opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, we the MSME must capture. The second is technology or manufacturing or production. The third is procurement. We first sell, that's our first thinking. In order to sell, we need to make it. And in order to make it, we need to, put, we need to procure something. For instance, let's say you are, um, you are a plastic manufacturer and you make plastic, you, you manufacture, but then you have, to pro, you have to procure your raisin, you have to procure your raw material. From so where do you procure? In this procurement, there are earlier, perhaps many of us in the MSME sector used to procure from China. Please look at the Chinese source of procurement of your business model, de novo. This is the risk management we have to think of. Perhaps Chinese sources, in my view, will not be the same as it used to be earlier. I think there is no voice I can see. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, is there no voice? I got a message saying there is no voice. Okay, okay, because there is a message which says there is no voice. Um, okay, um, hello. Okay, so the third one is procurement. Kindly look at the procurement, the way you are procuring, from where you are procuring, which country you are procuring from, what is the source, are there multiple, as uh, multiple sourcing suppliers? Please do not depend upon one supply source. Please try to de-risk yourself from Chinese sources. Many MSMEs depend on Chinese sources. We upgrade a little bit or we trade on the Chinese products. I would request all of you to look at this again because there is going to be some problem. Number three, number four is money. Now, perhaps money should have come number one, but I am taking number four because the whole world has no money. Nobody has money. And that's the biggest problem. My support sub submission to you is that rather than complaining, rather than thinking government has to give us everything, I think they can still not hear. Cannot hear anything the panelist is saying, that the panel is saying. So there is no voice, sir. Uh, Mahesh Bhai? Uh, Mahesh, uh, Mahesh, 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 can Mahesh, you repeat Mahesh, 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 Okay, ladies and gentlemen, could you refresh again if you don't mind? Uh, I do understand there is a problem. Okay, so let me carry on. I'll try to be brief and maybe do a question answer later on. So, money, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please look at a business concept where. You are going to sell for cash, easy to say, of course, but buy on credit. Buy on credit, sell on cash, which means my suggestion is contract the working capital cycle. You cannot keep the material and, and receivables for months together. There is no possibility of doing that. Your business model has to be shrink working capital, shrink fund requirement in your business. Whether banks are going to give funding, whether banks will fund, that's another matter altogether. We need, I'm not going to discuss it. There are a lot of opportunities. But what about changing our business model in a way that we need less, less, less cash deployment to do our business? And the fifth one is leadership. Ladies and gentlemen, our business is as good as ourselves. It is we the owners, the we the entrepreneurs, we the managers. We'll have to, we'll have to motivate our people. First, motivate ourselves. 
Trust me to that also that yes, we have a business model which works very well and we'll be able to do it for you. And the second is to motivate others. If everyone gets demotivated, nothing works. And therefore, and again I say, as I'm saying, the world is not going to end. There's still 7.5 billion population. India has a 1.35 billion population. All of us would need to eat and drink and make merry. It is just a question of shifting our business model from whatever we were doing to something else to make the new changing world. I know there is a voice problem, therefore I will quickly give five suggestions of businesses where perhaps we can all look at, most of it you know. The first business uh, sector where we should do quite well is pharmaceutical. Anything to do with, not pharmaceutical, I'm sorry, health. Anything to do with health is something please look at. A big opportunity is healthcare center. India, we always don't think about hospitals, but India does not have healthcare center. Healthcare center is somewhere to lower than hospital, cheaper cost to um, set up, and that is something NSA should look at. Healthcare center, please, ladies and gentlemen, look at. Food. Food is the second sector. Huge opportunity. Thank you. Huge opportunity. So that's something. Food is uh, a lot of food exports will take place. Packaged food from China will perhaps end. It's not un uh, unlikely to take place. Any single sector should be able to take advantage. Third, education. Ladies and gentlemen, as you the, the whole concept of webinar today it has changed. The, it has the paradigm changed the way we are speaking to each other, sharing each other's knowledge. Education is a huge opportunity for India to 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 have the world. These are the three hardcore stuff. Two soft core, soft stuffs. Our one is entertainment. The entertainment through internet is a huge opportunity for every one of us. Please look at that because you can sit at home and do. And the last one, the fifth one, perhaps we are not talking of, talking of as much, is some of us are quite intelligent, I'm sure. Some of us are quite young. Could you look at artificial intelligence? Could you look at, look at big data and, and um, the blockchain technology? The future in the world is going to be blockchain. I'm not going to explain what blockchain is because that's a little, perhaps take three, four minutes. But ladies and gentlemen, artificial intelligence, big data and blockchain is a huge opportunity. India is the big, will be the biggest source of this technology. And therefore, and it's all in the upswing. And we are in still at the at the baby level, and that's an opportunity I think we should take over. So my my final submission is, ladies and gentlemen, don't think the world has come to an end. There is still an opportunity. Rejig yourself, reinvent yourself, and just look at the way you market it, the what to sell, what to make, how you source, from where the money comes from, and you yourself should be motivated enough that we will provide the leadership to make a new business opportunity for all of us. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You have highlighted three points. One is in a particularly money, like a finance. Second, technology. And third is a unique opportunity. As you said that somehow there are plenty of uh, opportunities are there and which is not particularly uh, related to local, but instead of global. There is a huge opportunity. We have to understand that which segment. You have mentioned five sectors. In five sectors, uh, most, of the, most of the entrepreneurs from the India is looking more particularly the local business. But I suggest this is a good opportunity to identify the global market. I know so many entrepreneurs are uh, manufacturing quality product but they are facing a difficulty to get the proper emerging business opportunity. So here is the chamber. Chamber will be giving you uh, opportunity, support, guidance. Of course, you know, uh, government support will be there. But currently, the major issue is when the lockdown will be over, when we will start our business, how we will retain our labors, how we will get our trade receivables. And most importantly, how the bank will support me to, you know, to rectify or you know, refix my issues with the banking sector. Uh, friends, this is a very interesting uh, situation going on because most of the entrepreneurs are very, very uh, in difficult situation. They are uh, thinking that whether I will continue my business, whether I'll close my business, or whether I will think about, you know, starting a uh, instead of manufacturing, I'm starting a uh, consultancy. 
I will. I want to inform my friends from the manufacturing service and see this is a time, a challenging time. This time is giving you lesson. This time is giving you, you know, education. And of course, as a honorable prime minister said, "Jaan hai to jahan hai." So, ham jab tak ghar par baithke hamare future ke liye soste hai, us tarah se hamare business ko empower karne ke liye ham kaisa kam karenge, kya karenge? Planning karne ke liye aapko ek time mil gaya hai. You got a precious time to think about your future. Mostly SME sector, subah se leke shaam tak chale ka karte rehte kam. So this is a good time to think. And of course, you know, after third May, I don't know. Uh, there is a prediction that you know, particularly uh, whether we will uh, we will be continue our uh, business from third or lockdown will be extended in some area. Let's see what government is taking. But mostly, the uh, the issue is now. when we will start a business how will start a business how we will get the support whether government is going to support us to you know to pay the salary to my workers whether government is going to support me to identify new market and whether a government is going to support me to enhance my business activity friends you know particularly lot of entrepreneurs in the manufacturing industry they are looking for uh, export orders they are looking for support and guidance for mainly for uh, uh, identifying the new market Uh, with this word i would like to you know invite the mir shah to say a few words on particularly what are the issues and problems faced by the sme sector and and how sme sector will try to you know enhance the business activity not only at the local but at global level mir uh, thank you sir uh, very good afternoon to everyone uh, i am very happy and delighted to be amongst very very stalwarts of speakers and uh, addressing over 100 of you participants thank you so much mr salunke for inviting me again and really delighted to provide this uh, inputs well friends uh, i would be talking on respect to export and exporters uh, we are in there's no secret that the covid 19 is something which is uh, non thought of non planned there is no plan a b c d by anybody uh, to fight this pandemic everybody is learning everybody is coming up with the solutions as they deem fit and with sme as a sector we have little bit more challenges because of our limited resources and limited access of various aspects as far as exporters are concerned there is a challenge slightly more uh, to look at the challenge is not only internal it's not about when will india's lockdown get completed when will india open up it is also about when will the international markets business open up when will my us market open when will europe be normal when will middle east be normal when the pattern of people traveling increase when the consumption will increase so that's a challenge which we are facing uh, as an exporters not only just uh, domestic challenges not only when my manufacturing when the laborers will come back when the lockdown will get complete when will i come back to my optimum capacity but challenges are plenty now in this challenging period obviously as an exporter i need to sit back and decide on certain parameters certain parameters of the product uh, selection which are the products which i am now going to offer because uh, we are now looking at a situation which is called as pre covid and post covid you will not be in a position to do the same product range post covid or after covid that is called as which you would be able to doing pre covid or before covid so you'll have to reassess your situations of your products which you're offering to exporters uh, to your foreign buyers as an exporter you are also going to reassess the certain requirements of uh, the market whether you want were you a focus on us or middle east do you want to move to europe or asian markets or do you want to look at the latin american markets so you will have to refocus and reenergize your strategies to which markets are you addressing your now products after covid and this exercise is something which you are able to do now when during lockdown maybe in your group maybe uh, within a meeting having online virtually you can't go and meet everybody but your team can sit across and do this research do this understanding of new markets new product requirement which will happen which will be required post covid within few months from now and that's going to be 
the demand for your products in near future long term we may come back to the regular situations but at the moment immediately after the lockdowns are over once we are almost out of pandemic across the world we are looking at something different something new and norms are going to change social distancing is going to be the norms of the day irrespective of whether we are talking about lockdown being removed tomorrow day after 10 days one month three months six months social distancing is going to remain for a long long time hand sanitization and sanitization of our workplace uh, hygiene is going to be a big norm in a regular day to day life so look at that as an option as an export as a product now saying so that you know you as an exporter have to think about all of these there is also something which the government has to support you with the support has to come from government in form of supporting you in compliance support has to come in from the government in terms of assisting you in certain benefits or incentives as we call it as and we are looking at various options to all the credit to the government that they have already announced for exporters at least required much relief in terms of processes and compliance in terms of procedures already i would uh, let me quickly share some uh, a presentation with you guys so that you are aware of what we are discussing so uh, just to give you an update that department of commerce which governs the foreign trade policy and the most export businesses has already announced customs have already announced uh, gst has already announced certain changes i will not take gst we have a very learned senior uh, speakers mr selesh bhai who is going to talk about gst and i'm dying to hear him so talking about dgft customs talking about uh dg shipping rbi those have already taken proactive steps so as an exporter at one hand you are looking to develop new products and new markets at one hand you are trying to look at your manufacturing setup revival you can also look at the procedural and compliance advantages which the department has already come and given to you so if you look at dgft which overall controls the foreign trade uh we had a policy for five years period so we have a policy for 1520 the policy was to expire on 31st of march 2020 and for from 2020 that is april 1st for next 5 years we were supposed to have a new policy current situation not being conducive for new policy the existing policy as it is has been continued for one full financial year so until 31st of march 2021 we have the existing policy continued with all its provisions and all its process so the procedures the documentation you are already well versed up you are doing this for last 5 years so that's continued so you don't have, you have a continuity in your business you don't have to worry about something new to be learned with. there are various schemes which have been continued the most talked about for exporter was nei scheme the merchandise export from india scheme obviously it has been continued uh, as far as the current period is concerned just couple of informations so that there is a clarity and people don't keep on thinking about having a wrong notion the 2% additional mies which was introduced in october of 2017 has already been terminated in december 31st this notification was already issued on 7th of december and now by 31st of december this was terminated this has nothing to do with covid this was already announced that from 1st of january 2020 the additional 2% is not going to be available with the mies on exports of april's garments and made ups which come under chapter 61 62 63 that has been stopped with effect from 7th of march 2019 and in replacement there is a new scheme called as roscl the roscl is a replacement of an rosl scheme which ministry of textile had come up with and that is the scheme which we going to come up you would be aware of that wt in wto us has objected on the scheme of meis that this is non compliant to wto requirements and india has agreed or india has accepted internally obviously we are challenging that decision of wto but internally we have accepted and we are looking at a change over from mei scheme to a different scheme called as rod tap rebate of duties on export products duties and taxes on export products so rod tap is going to be uh, uh, rolled out and what has now been decided that the mei scheme is going to be there until 31st of december 2020 
So until 31st of December 2020, you will have the MEI scheme as it was continued from 1st of January 2020. And prior to 31st of December 2020, almost prior to that or just about that, you will have the new ROTEP rates coming out for various HS and core products. So the MEIS will switch to a ROTEP and the procedures will be defined. Until the ROTEP rates are announced, until the ROTEP rates are identified, MEIS will be continued. So if for any reason, if the ROTEP rates, let's say for an engineering item that's announced on 1st of June, MEIS for that HSN products will be switched over to ROTEP. ROTEP, how the procedure will be, what will you get, how will the incentive come, they're yet to get the updates or the department is yet to announce the procedures. As and when they'll announce, we will keep you updated about it. So until 31st of December, you may overall see scenario where your MEIS is going to continue. For service exports, for service exports, the SCIS scheme it is available to you. That has been extended. The application period has been extended until 31st of December for the financial year of 1819. So all those service providers who are wanting to file their application for 1819, the last date of application without late cut was 31st of March. Now that has been extended till 31st of December. So until 31st of December, if you apply, there will be no late cut. For SCIS on services rendered in 1920, a list of services is going to be announced separately and notified by Appendix 3X. And for 2021, department or DGF is going to take a call whether the SEIS will be given or they want to withdraw the scheme. Why I'm giving you this information is so that you can plan. The reason we are trying to uh, give this information and to give you clarity is that as an SME, as a goods or service exporter, you can plan well in advance and be aware of that there are certain procedural and compliance advantages or processes which have been relaxed and you can take advantage of this. Many of SMEs are already a one-star or two-star export house status holder certificate having status holder certificate. This certificate has a validity of five years and that five years may expire anytime, anytime in, let's say, April, May or June or maybe even November, December. Or it is expiring on 31st of March, whatever be the date. The government has changed the norm to say that the certificate which you have is valid for five years or until 31st of March 2021, whichever is later. Just yesterday, I got a message from one of our clients which saying, sir, my, uh, any, my status holder certificate is going to expire on May 25th. I said, don't worry, because now your validity is up to 31st of March 2021. You will enjoy all the benefits because it is whichever is later. Hence, all those who have status holder certificates, your all benefits are assured to you until next one year. So be assured, be, be assured of that without any worry. A lot of you are already availing the advanced authorization scheme where you are importing raw material without any duty. Under the scheme, the IGST and the compensation says was exempted uh, until 31st of March. DST Council has notified or extended it until 31st of March 2021. BGFT and Customs have already notified the same as well. Now, talking about advanced authorizations, you have uh, various things in the reauthorization. You have the norms fixation, you have the import requirement, and you have to export or you have an obligation to export. A very clear thumb rule which has been announced and which has been given to all of you as an exporter is if your validity of the license, if your export obligation, either of these is within the period of 1st February to 31st of July. Mind you, 1st February 2020 to 31st of July 2020, automatically it is extended for a period of six months. You do not have to apply to department. You do not have to go for any authorization endorsement. You do not have to pay any fees. It is suo moto, automatically extended for six months. In fact, about yesterday or day before yesterday, we got a confirmation from the customs as well. The CBIC has confirmed that this on the system, because this is notified, but even on the software side, the system side, you have to get this update, which has been done. So all your licenses where the import validity was expiring either from February 2020 or the 31st of July, you've already got six months extension. And after six months, 
which is your mean, which is the extension under this, whatever policy provides you an extension further in case, you can still go for it. So if you have an export obligation, your export obligation is already extended for six months. After that, if you still want to extend it, the normal procedure by paying necessary composition fee or a penalty or a charge can be still pursued. So this is not your period extended from the policy. This is an additional period given to you. And that's a six-month period. And not only for the so-called lockdown period, it is from February 1st till the 31st of July 2020. So that's something which is very, very interesting. If you are, uh, we were before talking about the textile industry who have now been given under instead of MEIS, a scheme called ROSCTL. So ROSCTL has to be filed until, or has to be filed until 31st of June 2020. That period is also extended up to 31st of December. A scheme called as DFIA is available to certain class of people who want to, uh, instead of buying raw material, transfer that license. Again, the validity has been extended for six months. The whole thing you need to understand in nutshell is six months extension has been given for most of the schemes which is available to you. EPCG is very important. Capital goods, again, the IGC compensation says which was valid till 31st of March 2020. Straight away, it has been extended till 31st of March 2021 as per the GST Council update. So DGFT and Customs have already given the notification of it. Under EPCG, you have a couple of things again. You have the installation certificate where you have to install the machine, where you have to fulfill your export obligation in four years period, which is the first block, and then in the second block of fifth and the sixth year. Again, if your period is between 1st February to 31st of July, you are eligible for a six-month extension. That means you are already given that extension for next six months. So whether it is installation certificate period, whether it is your first block extension or your export obligation. Everything has been extended for six months. In fact, if your period is not between February to July, but you have missed on certain compliance procedure, whether it is an installation certificate, whether it is a block base, there is a, there is a notification where you were allowed a donation, meaning without any penalty, without any damage, you were allowed to submit this. That condonation was available till 31st of March. Now it is extended till 31st of March 2021. So by a public notice, number one, they have extended this donation of blockwise or EO. If you have done this for your old licenses, you are very clearly available or benefited to use this benefit of condonation and take the advantage of your submission or delay or procedural lapse for next one year. In case if you are an EOU, uh, again, the exemption of IGST and compensation says is available to you for another one year. So if you see the advantage is passed on from six months to one year on a most in most cases. For exporters of agriculture products, you had a scheme called TMA, Transport and Marketing Assistance. This is a scheme where you have to apply on a quarterly basis. And the application period is that for the quarter application, you have to apply it in next one year. So that one year would fall on 31st of March 2020 or on 30th of June 2020. This period has been extended up to 30th of September 2020. So for the quarter of 31st March 2019, that is Dan Feb March 2019 quarter and April May June 19 quarter, your application can be done until 30th of September 2020. So that's another six months of extension. You would aware that for all these incentives, you require an Export Promotion Council, that is an EPC's membership called as the RCMC. The RCMC is typically valid for one financial year. So every financial year, that is the first week of April, you will have to renew by making the payment. We are in a lockdown situation, very difficult to probably make a payment, send the documents, get it registered. Though most councils have done it online, so you can do that. However, department has relaxed the norm by saying, that in case if you are not having an RCMC, they will not insist for the same valid RCMC for the current financial year until 30th of September. So any of your applications, any of your submissions are going be without the RCMC for this period, that is from 1st of April till 30th of September, having an old RCMC is valid. They will not be insisting you to get a valid renewed RCMC. Once the lockdown is over, you can go and renew it. Let me reiterate. Most of the councils have 
moved on to an online research uh, rcmc system so ideally you are even today in a position to apply for the renewal and get it renewed for steel industry there was there's this uh, specific requirement if you import certain products under chapter 72 73 and 86 you are required to register at least 15 days prior to your import and in 60 days which is the validity so 15 days prior and 60 days after it is 75 days is the validity of a sim certificate which is an import permit kind of a thing you have to register it's not a kind of permit but the registration is important or mandatory uh, that and if you have applied for 30 until 31st of march 2020 the validity instead of 75 days 15 days prior and 60 days after instead of validity being 75 days the validity is of 135 days so in case if your import has not come it is getting delayed you are unable to clear it the vessel is not calling back to india or indian ports you don't have to worry because your sims for which there is a fee which is being paid it is not going to go into case it is still valid for 135 days from the date of issue for the ones which have been issued up to 31st of March 2020. <laughs> Many of you are exporting and importing goods under a free trade agreement, and you are required to submit certain uh, certificate of origin. For Europe, there is a REX registration which is required, which requires that one time you have to register documents to the uh, nodal agency, which is DGFT. that manual submission has been done away with you can do an electronic submission for certificate of origin under a specific free trade agreements we had already had three certificate of three agreements which were completely online and by the dgft portal called coo.dgft.gov.in now we have increased that list from 7th of april to another six with this partner countries so for all these partner countries and for all these six free trade agreements You are you are required to apply it online, and it will be issued online. So you don't have to worry about getting a physical certificate of origin. The preferential certificate of origin is going to be available to you straight away online without any hassles. So this is what the BGFT covers. It looking at customs. Customs has also already announced certain measures. Uh, number one, in case if you are importing either raw material or your finished goods. Uh, you are required to file a bill of entry within a stipulated time. Otherwise, you are liable to pay penalty of rupees five thousand for first three days, and then ten uh, thousand until you file your bill of entry. This late fee has been waived off. So, from twentieth March twenty twenty, if you have any imports coming, late fee has been waived off. You do not pay any late fee. Exporters or importers who are required to submit bonds in terms of clearance of cargo. This bond requirement of bond has been waived off. It can be cleared under a declaration and undertaking with specific documentation and procedures to be sent via email. Via email, no required personal thing, but there is a procedure laid down, and that has been extended until the fifteenth of May. So until fifteenth of May, whether you have an import or export where you are required to give some submit, submit bonds, you are not required to submit bonds. You are able to do so. With an undertaking, why this notification? Uh, clearance of import containers where you require the out of charge and gate pass. It was uh, a process which was manually driven. A document has to be moved. Or papers have to be moved from one place to another. That has been completely done online. From fifteenth of April, we have completely online e gate pass and out of charge mechanism. The PDF file comes on your email, on your CHS email with a barcode. So the gatekeeper at the gate office has to, the CFS has to just scan those barcodes, and the out of charge and the goods can be released from the CFSs and gate officers can release it just on a uh, scanned document rather than having any physical documents. That has already been implemented from fifteenth of April. The customs knowing the liquidity, and I'm, I can vouch this because I know the MSMEs have lot of refunds stuck with various exports, uh, ports in terms of drawback, IGST refunds, and uh, various other schemes. Now, for the drawback and IGST refund, the customs has already initiated a disposal drive whereby refunds have been released uh, on a regular basis. Uh, we had an update from customs saying that they had released a good amount of refund. Very recently, from all the ports, so most of your refunds, whether it is in form of drawback or IGST, has been released, and they are 
planning to come down to a zero pendency level by 30th of April. So most of your liquidity issues will be resolved or trying to be resolved to this refund drive. For people who are into wanting to import certain items, uh, we know the situation of COVID and pandemic is uh, rising. Uh, in case if you want to import any of these items, namely ventilators, face masks, mind you, guys, import and not export. This is import. Import of ventilators, face masks, surgical masks, PPE equipment, COVID kits, or any raw material related to that. You will be allowed to import without any custom duty and LCS. So there is nil excess an exemption on custom duty and LCS, especially for these items. Just to encourage this. Uh, the implementation point, again, process driven, again, procedural aspects. So where you are storing your goods in a bonded warehouse and you have to seal it with an e-seal, the process has been extended, uh, which was due on 31st of March. It has been extended till 30th of June. So from 30th of June, e-seal will apply. Uh, this has been the talk of the town, especially with exporters and importers, where DG Shipping has announced certain waiver. The waiver were for non-detention non container charges, at the ports and by the shipping line for the damage and the uh, various other charges because of non-collection of the cargo or the container. Now, DG Shipping originally announced this on by, by way of an order dated 29th of March, order number seven, where they said you will not the shipping lines as well as the port authorities, the CFS, the uh, entire uh, you know the supply chain guys would not charge you detention and other things by uh, until the lockdown period that was from 22nd to 14th. There's a subsequent order number 11 dated 22nd of April where this period has been extended from 22nd of March to 3rd of May and similarly for the ground rent, dam range up from 15th of April till 3rd of May. So they are, or the order puts up the onus on the ports, the custodians, the CFS, the shipping lines to not to charge any damage, any loading, unloading charges, any storage charges beyond the fee period, which you get generally three days, seven days, 10 days, beyond that free period for the date 15th April to 3rd May. Yes, I am aware that there is a dispute between the shipping line, CFS not accepting this norm. Uh, we are, I assume that there is cognizant taken that various authority level, including the government level, and I'm sure we can expect some update from the government from that aspect. However, at the moment, these are the only orders which have been placed. So, yes, CFS, the port authorities or shipping line may not agree to you at this point of time, but we are expecting some update or some order from the government further to this respect. Last uh, couple of points is in terms of payments. So RBI plays an important role and you are obviously required as an exporter to make sure that you clear your compliances or requirements of the payments. You have to bring in foreign exchange. You are obligated to do that. Now, obviously, in the COVID situation, not only the export which has happened now or which will happen in future, your past export payments are getting stuck. So RBI has announced that the time period which you are allowed to bring in foreign exchange, that was nine months. Within nine months, you are supposed to bring in the foreign exchange. Now, for exports made up to 31st of July, please understand the wordings here. And this is very, very important because that's the benefit as an exporter you get. Up to 31st of July, any exports, whether it is in the lockdown period or prior to lockdown period, prior to probably seven months, six months, now you are period to bring in the uh, uh, realization is instead of nine months, is 15 months from the date of export. So from the date of export, the 15 months period within which you can bring in your foreign exchange and that is how you can assist your foreign buyer, a good buyer, to make, give him some more extension of credit and then get the money so that you save your buyer as well as you are fully compliant with the RBI norms. Lastly, uh, we have an agency called ECGC, which is a credit uh, credit insurance company, which takes case of your insurance. Now, when you have taken an export insurance against your foreign buyer, there would be certain compliance to be done. Whether it is in form of your returns, whether it is in form of applications, some submissions of everything, that period has been extended because of the lockdown until 31st of May. If you have to make some, there was some default by the buyer and you have to make a claim, the deadline 
is that you have to do it within a month or so. But because of the lockdown, you are not able to do. The time is extended up to June 2020. If you had a specific shipment policy, so policies are taken, you have taken an insurance and for whatever reason, the export is not happening. The policy is for a particular period. That period, if it is expiring in March, it is automatically extended up to June 2020. So this is something which is already being done. Now, that's exactly why I wanted to bring out this presentation and give you an update that why, why we are focusing on various aspects of how to cope up, how to bring back ourselves how to uh, restart our thing we already have in place many of the provisions of policy procedures already given to you yes they may be requiring some more there are some more few challenges i'm aware of certain gst issues which i'm waiting for mr shade to take it further but the things which are already available as an exporter we should be aware so that we can plan and strategize then you are aware that you have a six months extension period you can focus on uh, your export market. You can focus on reviving your manufacturing and rather than focusing on compliance because you know you have an extension of six months. So with this, I would hand it back to Mr. Salunke. Friends, all those who wanted a presentation, the link is available to you on the slide which is right on the top and obviously uh, SME Chamber will share the presentation with you guys. Thank you so once again. I hand it over to Mr. Salunke. Thank you, Mir. Thank you for your very, very important and useful information particularly for the perspective of the you know, entrepreneurs, those are into exports. Uh, this is very interesting because shipping and transportation as well as the DGFT and how the commerce ministry is supporting SME entrepreneurs, particularly for export and particularly for the, you know, to, to utilize the schemes and incentives available with the Ministry of Commerce and DGFT. Friends, you know, when, uh, when um, Mir was talking and Mr. Banerjee was talking, I just got a message from one of my friends that, 2.32 lakh crore worth MSMEs loans are going to be, you know, uh, at, uh, at the risk and turning bad. It looks like a, uh, becoming NPA. 2.32 lakh crore loan taken by MSME uh, entrepreneurs or enterprises will be becoming a bad, it will be becoming a NPA. So this is a very interesting uh, you know, steps for the government, particularly for banks, how they will be supporting our entrepreneurs, how they want to give the handholding during this you know, difficult situation. Today, rather, Mr. Mishra from CGM uh, SBI supposed to join, but uh, some technical reason he couldn't make it. But uh, we will try to you know invite him at the uh, end of the, our uh, uh, webinar, particularly because a lot of entrepreneurs are having, you know, uh, doubts and issues related to banking sector because government is an announcing, RBI is announcing some uh, relief, but banks are not given the mandatory directions. Banks should come with a mandatory direction that, yes, we want to support MSME sector to, you know, to retain their business, continue their business, and, and of course, to create confidence among them, because without bank, SME will not grow, and without SME, India will not grow. Uh, Prime Minister said that they want to achieve the 5 trillion US dollars economy. How they will do without SMEs? So with this word, you know, I want to suggest, and I want to request the bankers to support the entrepreneurs, support the MSMEs. Those are looking for, you know, timely, uh, you know, support and timely deal so we uh, we will try to you know invite uh, mr Mishra at the end of the uh, the webinar meanwhile i would like to invite mr lele to share his thoughts on particularly for the you know the corporate affairs most of the smes are you know facing big problem but you know somehow the corporate affairs given some relief so that relief whatever the relief given by the uh, corporate affairs ministry and particularly for the you know register of companies what will be the steps, what will be these you know, suggestions given by them. So, Mr. Lele, you can take forward. Thank you. Thank you, Chandrakan, sir. It's a pleasure uh, coming to the SME platform and uh, addressing uh, the SME members of uh, our organization. Uh, thanks, my co-panelists, uh, for uh, already started uh, giving a lot of inputs to the SMEs and I will also play my role in the entire process. Uh, uh, I have some points to discuss about uh, 10, uh, 10 to uh, 12 slides I have uh, to share with you. 
which uh, in this process, uh, I would like to uh, share that uh, what could be the strategies uh, the business could adopt uh, for the purpose of combating COVID. I'm purposely using the word combat because uh, this is a fight, this is a combat, and the entire India is fighting. So uh, I'm just uh, putting my presentation on. This is uh, visible. Hmm? Yes, go ahead. Yes, go ahead. sir. Yes, Hello. sir. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, sir. It is visible, sir. Let us say, okay. go ahead. And I am also audible. Hmm? Yes, sir. You are perfectly audible, and the presentation is fine. Okay. Thank you. So uh, this is about the challenges and opportunity today's uh, webinar. Uh, I will be talking on the business strategies uh, combat COVID nineteen. Uh, Yes, friends, India is fighting back and we are looking forward to 3rd May uh, to be the D-Day uh, where uh, the, uh, the expectation uh, all around that uh, we'll come back to the business, we'll come back to our regular routines, uh, but still fingers are crossed. Uh, uh, there are certain areas uh, where uh, the, uh, the pandemic is growing. There are certain areas where it is under control. Uh, my salute to all uh, policemen, all uh, medical staff, all doctors and uh, everybody who is uh, leading this uh, fight uh, from the front and uh, trying to achieve uh, third May to be the D-Day. So let us look forward to this. Uh, this is lockdown two. In the lockdown two, there are certain uh, positive improvements have happened. The testing ratio, uh, uh, India's testing ratio has fallen down. Testing ratio is uh, test to positive ratio. Multiplication period is uh, also somewhere constant to seven. So uh, the multiplication is happening uh, seven, barring uh, certain uh, certain cities like uh, Pune and Mumbai. Uh, the multiplication is under control. There is an effective channelization of machinery to the COVID cloud. Uh, there are ample amount of uh, mobilization of resources has also happened. Uh, availability of foods and essentials uh, uh, is also uh, to the great extent it is now available now. The reasonable success in implementation of social distancing and voluntary, voluntary home quarantine. Also, there is an introduction of uh, institutional quarantine. Uh, today's morning news is that uh, Pune, they, they are going to uh, institutionally quarantine about 70,000 people, 70,000 people uh, in the institutional areas. Uh, and uh, we would uh, like to see that uh, how this is going to control the pandemic. Uh, there is an improvement in testing facilities. Uh, uh, entire India is now has been mapped uh, into three zones. That is the orange zone, green zone and the red zone. Uh, there are attempts to do uh, the phase-wise opening of businesses in the green zone and orange zones. Uh, government has also now started uh, showing certain concerns for the businesses and its survivals post-COVID. This is a very, very good sign for all of us. Uh, what is the current business scenario? It's a complete stoppage. Everybody knows, everybody is suffering. Uh, the government has brought uh, various concessions. Some of has already been discussed by me here. Uh, uh, there are basically the extensions are about the dates. There are waivers on additional fees and ease of compliances. There are handful concessions are also made uh, around the banking and finance. So no, not uh, directly the monetary benefits has been extended or any scheme has been introduced. But certain uh, banking and finance concessions has been given. Uh, the protection to the temporary workers and their wages has been provided. Uh, I'll discuss this uh, later on, uh, how this is affecting on the businesses. Uh, protection of the tenants, uh, deferment of rent payments. Uh, I will also talk uh, what is going to happen about the commercial uh, uh, rents and the commercial tenancies. Uh, there are serious uh, recovery issues since mid-March and uh, I think people uh, are suddenly getting their uh, recoveries and uh, the entire cash flow. Uh, there is an acute shortage of working capital. Uh, as uh, Salonke sir had just pointed out, uh, the bankers need to be uh, aggressive in their lending. Bankers are not lending uh, uh, to, to the extent uh, like say certain soft loans are also required to be provided uh, to any 
enable the businesses to survive. Uh, forget about the growth, but the survival of the business is the most important factor in, in the current scenario. They, there is certain uh, areas which have been opened, which have been allowed to conduct the businesses, uh, but uh, uh, certain issues are there, like say there is non-availability of public transport, other basic infrastructure is also not available. Uh, Re-migration of workers, so those workers who have already moved out of the take them back and uh, put them to work. And why this is important? Because uh, uh, over the years, these workers have been trained by the businessmen and the industries and uh, it is uh, equally difficult for the industry to start with uh, new workers coming in and doing the same quality of the activity. And therefore, re-migration of workers uh, is very, very important. On the other hand, I have heard the news that uh, those workers which have been locked down in the state of Maharashtra, they are likely to be uh, 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 taken out of Maharashtra uh, uh, for the purpose of convenience. But I don't understand uh, how this move will help to the businesses in the state of Maharashtra and how this will help to the migrated workers because uh, uh, if suppose there is a worker from Bihar who has been locked down in the state of Maharashtra and who is likely to travel to the uh, Bihar state, whether Bihar state will allow them to come in or they will keep them into the 14-15 days uh, uh, isolation. That is also a challenge we need to see. Uh, requirement of, uh, there is a stringent requirement businesses has to comply if they want to commence the business. That is the stay and food facilities to be provided to the workers. Once the workers have been travelled to the place of business, they are not allowed to again come back uh, to their residential places so that all these arrangements, the SMEs are finding, particularly the SMEs are finding it difficult to uh, comply with these conditions. Uh, business owners uh, found themselves that they are at a risk on the workers' health and safety because if anything, if the business has commenced, the workers are deployed and if anything happens to them, the business owner being the employer and, and the occupier of the factory would be directly responsible and would be held responsible there is an uncertainty about lifting of lockdown for orange and red zones. We don't know when that is going to happen. Uh, there is a governing uh, and how, how this entire story is uh, to be controlled by the government. There are two important acts, uh, which is one Epidemic Disease Act uh, 1897, which uh, when the, uh, when there was, uh, there was a plague uh, and particularly in Pune, uh, this particular act was uh, introduced first time by uh, the English people and uh, there is a Safekar Bandhu uh, uh, case also connected with this. So many of us know this. So this uh, particular act has now been implemented. This enabled the government to take suitable measures and prescribe suitable regulations to control the epidemic. Disobedience will of this particular act will lead to uh, punishment of imprisonment and fine under section 188 of the Indian Penal Code. Uh, there is another act, uh, Disaster Management Act 2015. This act provides for the framework for effective management of uh, disasters. It authorizes the government to effectively implement all machineries and resources to control and manage diseases. Currently, the entire government uh, directions are issued under the Disaster Management Act and uh, how far they are, uh, they are effective, uh, that we'll see. Uh, there is a facilitation, a uh, couple of facilitations has already been discussed uh, by Mihir. So uh, there are RBI directives to the bank, uh, ease of repayment of loans, uh, burden is postponed. So uh, so the uh, for up to June, uh, the, uh, the facility has been provided that uh, repayment could be uh, scheduled after June. So burden is postponed. It is not, uh, it is not, uh, there is no levy or no concession has been granted. However, nothing comes free because uh, interest is uh, going to multiply even for these three months. Uh, deferment of recovery of interest and loan installment and no NPA categorization. This is very, very important even if you are uh, falling under NPA categorization because of three months non-payment. That is not going to happen. Your credit rating is uh, likely to be intact and that is not uh, going to affect even if you don't pay the loan installment for three months. Ease of corporate compliances, couple of uh, corporate uh, compliances has been, uh, ease has been announced, uh, like say filing of GST returns, due dates are extended. Uh, 
there is the ministry of corporate affairs who has announced two schemes one is for the companies and one is for the llp they are popularly known as uh, fresh start schemes uh, basically helpful to the industries and the businesses which have uh, not filed their documents there is a delay in filing the documents and the compliances and uh, those documents could be filed now with this additional fees even if there is a delay between the period from the february to june uh, we can take the benefit under this scheme this scheme is uh, live up to september and uh, we can file the documents forms and returns under this particular scheme under llp and the company uh, and and uh, only the normal filing fees would be applicable uh, the additional fees and penalty won't be charged plus uh, there is a process uh, that uh, the directors and the promoters and the llps and the companies and the partners would get uh, immunity from uh, the compliances that is no penal provision would be applicable that kind of a immunity would be available insolvency trigger point uh, increase to dues of rupees 1 crores very rightly this uh, move has been taken to avoid the small small litigations uh, and this is a temporary measure this is not a permanent uh, this thing so once the pandemic situation is over we are back to the businesses the insolvency uh, trigger point would be come down to uh, the original point of 1 lakh of rupees and the uh, timelines uh, the lockdown period would be excluded from the timeline so those cases which are in the process uh, the timeline uh, the lockdown period won't be considered there is a relaxation of conditions to have resident director from indian companies uh, this has relaxation has been provided board meetings relaxation numbers has been provided relaxation in various compliances regulations by sebi for listed entities uh, uh, and even online compliances online filing is permitted holding of agm through bc is permitted csr has given a clarification that don donation to pm care fund would be uh, eligible csr activity the caro applicability which was supposed to be from the uh, uh, 1920 financial year now would be applicable from 2021 financial year so after completion of uh, after closure of uh, financial year 2021 the caro would be applicable so this is really ease for the professionals and for the businesses there is a reduction in penal interest for delay in deposits and tds and tcs uh, etc has been provided time period of 15 months is granted for realization of export proceed without the approval extension of time granted for deposit of employees related dues to the government there are various schemes which has been announced uh, majority of business licenses expiry period is extended so it is uh, it has been already uh, uh, intimated by me that uh, between the period of february uh, if your uh, license was expiring it gets automatic renewal uh, fema there's fdi and acquisition of stake by transfer of entity this is very very important amendment which has happened uh, there were attempts from uh, the neighboring countries uh, to take over the businesses uh, uh, at Uh, at a very cheap price uh, because of this pandemic situation and in order to control uh, this particular uh, situation and to protect the indian businesses uh, this process has been introduced where uh, any investment uh, from the uh, countries uh, sharing the borders of india uh, requires the government approval and uh, earlier it was under automatic route but this is very very welcome uh, move uh, taken by the government of india <laughs> what will happen to the contracts and arrangements usually the contracts have uh, the force majeure clause uh, where the act of god uh, has been provided that if any situation which is beyond the control of the parties <coughs> Uh, leads to a delay in uh, complying the promises uh, which have been provided in the contracts and the agreements then uh, penalties and uh, penalties and obligations associated with won't be applicable but uh, uh, in force majeure clause uh, this particular pandemic uh, pandemic and uh, epidemic situations uh, were never covered because that was never uh, never thought that this is uh, this is going to happen in the world so uh, just go back and check your force majeure clauses and uh, see what exactly has been provided if that particular situation if the current situation is covered under uh, the force majeure clause then to the extent you have got a relief then uh, i think the party uh, uh, the party to the contract cannot uh, sue you or cannot claim any uh, penalties associated penalties or fine associated with because there is of course going 
going to be the delay in suppliers and delay in uh, committing the contractual obligation. But if this particular clause is not there, then uh, better you uh, start negotiating and uh, discuss with the parties and uh, try to get some relief uh, for this particular period. The commercial property rate and leasehold agreements also need to see uh, is there any waiver clause uh, or otherwise request the landlords to grant some waiver uh, or deferment in payment of uh, rents and uh, lease uh, lease amounts. Uh, uh, the force majeure clause, if check if it is there, then uh, to that extent that will help you in the entire process. Payment of salaries and wages. Uh, there is one direction which has been provided by the Ministry of Labour and Employment Government of India. There is an advisory uh, that during the lockdown, all employees to extend their coordination and not to terminate their <coughs> employments uh, and leave taken by the workers to be considered. Uh, yes, Leave taken by workers to be considered uh, as on duty and no wage deduction to happen. Further advisory to make wage payments on due date at the workplace and then MCA while giving the clarification on the CSR uh, stated that uh, it is a moral obligation of the employers to pay uh, the salaries and wages of the employees. So in nutshell, uh, there is a forceful obligation uh, put in by the government on the employers saying that uh, you are required to pay uh, the dues of the workers. You cannot uh, terminate the uh, contractual workers and you have to continue to pay. So that obligation uh, is continued. I think uh, uh, most of us have paid the March dues and uh, April dues are likely to be there in next week. So uh, we need to really make the arrangements for uh, arrangement of funds for this particular story. Uh, on the other hand, uh, what is the situation? On the other hand, the salaries of members of the parliament and members of various state legislative assemblies were reduced uh, voluntarily. Then central government has also done some adjustments in calculation of uh, DA uh, for the future period. Uh, and the Industrial Dispute Act uh, is applicable to the factories where uh, Section 25M recognized that uh, natural calamity uh, for the cause of natural calamity, uh, you can you can uh, lay off the employees, uh, uh, and even this is uh, companies and other economic units can also do this. Uh, but so uh, on one hand you have the directives to pay, on the other hand you have the provisions of, uh, and there is a uh, also precedence uh, coming from the members of the parliament. So really, this is a challenging story for the industries to whether to pay, whether to continue, whether to stop. Uh, I also heard that uh, this particular situation is subsidized now and uh, I think there are uh, petitions pending uh, before the Supreme Court and High Court to decide on this particular matter. So wait and watch, uh, see what is going to happen. Uh, but the apprehension is that uh, if the suitable economic policies and financial measures, uh, uh, if not brought in uh, by the government of India the, uh, to safeguard the industry and economy, then I think uh, uh, the, uh, there is going to be the collapse and, uh, uh, and uh, many, many industries are uh, likely to uh, go into the insolvency because uh, they could not sustain uh, salary and wage based is monthly without any uh, positive earnings. What could be done uh, in the meanwhile that uh, try to negotiate with your employees and, and uh, request them to accept the pay cut or uh, make uh, payments uh, and adjust some leaves. So all these uh, jugglers uh, we can try. Uh, in the meanwhile, the courts decide what is going to happen. Uh, the experts are saying that uh, uh, these two orders which I have mentioned uh, are uh, not likely to pass uh, the legal test and uh, uh, these are uh, not appropriate orders but at this juncture these orders are there and we have to follow these orders. Uh, this is what is the situation. What is missing in the entire process is uh, definite roadmap to bring back economy to the normal. Uh, definite and clear cut roadmap is expected now from the government. Uh, for fresh start of business also uh, some strategies are required to be delivered. Uh, 
bring back migrated workers i already discussed this uh, uh, in my view the uh, advisory is also needed to big businesses to clear sme dues because act uh, all of us are aware act provides for 45 days priority for sme payments uh, but the big businesses are uh, seldomly paying to the smes uh, within 45 days and at the to the extent of uh, making the soft loans do aggressive uh, lending to the customers and they are your existing customers so you need to uh, uh, you need to actually uh, you need to actually uh, uh, support them at this particular juncture but uh, in reality that is not happening concessions in gst stamp uh, state tax and stamp duty some something is required uh, sarunke sir is always uh, promoting this particular uh, cause that gst should be reduced to the extent certain uh, relief should be granted uh, to the sme uh, substantial reduction in electricity fuel and other essential prices are also required on one hand we are looking at uh, the international fuel prices are going down but in india the prices are constant so who is earning in the entire process there is also requirement of uh, banning of potential litigations which are likely to arise out of this force majeure and contractual obligation the singapore uh, has already introduced this uh, banning clause uh, and they have clearly stated that no no litigations would be allowed out of this force majeure and contractual obligations and you have to settle within yourself though the limitation period uh, exclusion has already been provided but that is not sufficient according to me what business owners to do uh, you have to perform a mock drill for the fresh start see sitting at home uh, you have to you have to have a 360 degree approach for your business that uh, what is likely to happen uh, and how i should do it how i should mobilize the resources uh, this particular mock drill is required so whenever and you should be mentally uh, ready to uh, do a fresh start make revise business plan because this 3 uh, 4 months has going to lose further 3 4 months we are going to lose so uh, relevant and uh, relevant and practical adjustments in the business plan is required don't uh, carry over the earlier business plan pre uh, pre pandemic business plan because that is not going to work now so uh, sitting at home do your uh, revise business planning and you only can do it you don't need uh, any experts help for that and of course experts are experts like me and other panelists are available when you require the sme chamber is also available for uh, supporting you sense your market uh, uh, robin has uh, rightly pointed out that you need to do some uh, alterations in your market strategy realign your strategies and product mix design action plan to move to e business and e office many has Uh, many of us have now realized the importance of uh, uh, sitting at home and uh, doing a remote business activity and running a remote e office so uh, try to strengthen on this particular uh, thing don't see this as a cal calamity but see this as an opportunity and Uh, see how you can strengthen the e-business and e-office concept, and how you can remotely monitor your entire business. Prepare plan of action for fresh start. Material, machines, manpower, mobility management, all these things you need to align in your mind first, and then on the paper, and then uh, practically. Uh, realign the supply chain management and decide about inventory strategies whether you need uh, the current stock and how much stock you should uh, have and all these inventory strategies are need to be realigned now how much you buy how much you don't buy all these things are required uh, to be uh, aligned uh, plan for implementation of covid Uh, pro protectionary measures at the workplace because this is going to be the future now so implement all uh, uh, covid protectionary measures at your workplace uh, see that they are working properly they have been implemented properly plan for satisfying customers altered need customers are going to come you uh, once the business restart the customers are going to come you to like anything and uh, they will put you in number of demands so how to satisfy these altered demands is one of the biggest challenge for you as a supplier
plan to raise working capital i have already talked about the bankers uh, there is a uh, uh, there is a collective attempt required on the bankers that uh, they should they should lend they should lend to the current customers they should lend to the existing customers soft loans are required uh, plan to make speedy recovery of dues i already mentioned this and plan to control expenditures and costs this is very very important so if you have two businesses one is in the uh, green zone and one is in the red zone so you don't uh, so you focus on the green zone business right now and try to accelerate that particular business and don't look at the red zone business don't make any attempts to or don't make any expenditure and uh, incur cost on the red business zone because unless the red business the red zone uh, becomes completely converted into a green zone you are not going to get any kind of a success so focus on uh, the green uh, business uh, your business at the green zone otherwise just uh, control the cost and sit at home and look what is going to happen so uh, this is going to be the new earth uh, with the mask uh, new vision and new normal uh, what are these new normals always ready with the business disaster management plan so uh, this was never thought earlier but uh, now in future you have to have <coughs> the business disaster plan ready back up your resources uh, protect your workforce and the people this is the mo most important stakeholders in your business so protect them <coughs> give them lot of support give them mental strength so that they will remain with you ensure yourself and business from all potential risk the current insurance uh, strategies are required to be changed required to be amended uh, <coughs> you will have to identify the new product mix new insurance and all the protection is now required so realignment is required to that extent maintain excellent relations with all stakeholders that will help you <coughs> sorry create clean and green environment reduce carbon footprint this is for your help we have experience for last two months now that uh, how the environment is changing how that is helpful to us and what the surrounding uh, changes are happening how they are beneficial to us so we will try to reduce the carbon footprints uh, conserve for future plan and implement business and personal succession this is very very important we have never thought uh, that uh, end of uh, world will come very soon but that is likely to come uh, at any point in time in future so you should have a plan ready uh, for the business and personal succession today's protective cost is investment for tomorrow uh, think from that angle compliance today leads to a peaceful tomorrow and therefore don't avoid any compliances uh, how uh, professionals and uh, we can support you in your journey Uh, all uh, analysis of the covid impact of your business could be done uh, planning and support for fresh start uh, then policy designing and implementation uh, you need to have the policies the financial business governance risk management and compliance policies these are the five six policies you should have you should implement those policies analysis and advisory for restructuring of loans and bank funding this is going to happen in near future business restructuring also would be inevitable in certain cases then advisory for implementation of financial controls and cost reduction measures uh, this is a lifelong strategy you need to adopt uh, policy designing and implementation to protect business owners the protection of a business owner is very very important because we are now exposed to such a situation that we never know what is going to happen and there are singular penalties uh, all around the laws which we are dealing with so the protection of a business owner uh, and the measures towards that uh, and achieving the succession these are the important points where we can help you then advisory for understanding effective regulatory compliances uh, is also equally important your compliances are uh, as i have mentioned if you timely do the compliances uh, you can sleep uh, uh, comfortably for the future uh, then, uh, insolvency and advisory support uh, me we are likely to land into this story uh, post covid uh, so that support we can provide debt recovery and advisory uh, support debt recovery is also going to be the challenging contractual and agreement support i have already mentioned what are the gray areas coming around this litigation support 
and undertaking post covid business valuations so your business valuation are definitely going to change because of this particular covid impact so you need to really understand what is my valuation the yesterday's valuation may not be helpful to you so this business valuation uh, would be required a fresh business valuation would be required friends uh, at the end uh, be positive uh, look up at the sky at night and enjoy star gazing uh, the sky will be definitely blue again uh, i thank uh, all of you for patient listening if you have any uh, any suggestions or uh, any questions you can reach to me uh, sme chamber already have the copy of my presentation and uh, they i'm sure they will uh, share with you thank you very much thank you thank you for patient listening thank you thank you mukranj it is very very interesting and very informative uh, speech you. you are given and i'm sure that you know, all the entrepreneurs those are you know live and they are watching and listening to you definitely they will take away from some points which is very relevant and very useful for their business uh, uh, rather in during their uh, difficult situation uh, one uh, participant has mentioned the question that we know the problems we are facing problem we want solution so you had given at least uh, 17 18 solutions when you are in difficult situation when you are in a problem when you are in a facing any issue you know the covid is you know invisible enemy and in business particularly in sme business there are visible invisible many issues and problems are harder are faced faced by our sme sector and you know when you mention about in particularly the labor workman force how to retain how to uh, tackle their issues what the government orders given by the Uh, particularly to you know to retain their workers to retain their staff retain their employees i suggest you know particularly entrepreneurs those are into manufacturing industry look at the policy look at the you know directions given by sm uh, by the government and if you have any suggestions if you have any particular you know issues or any any feedback you want to provide please write to us we will take up to the concerned departments and and so particularly you know Uh, another very uh, interesting point raised by one of the delegate that uh, how we can uh, reform our business because this is a time now to restructure reform rethink about your business uh, values business uh, activities or you know particularly business planning uh, coming days will be very difficult few, few days will be difficult but after that there will be a huge and abundant market will be open for you because you look at the european market look at the european people look at the european health european people's health how many deaths are there how many deaths in the usa so around 196 countries facing covid 19 and you know we can give a, we should give a thanks to our prime minister who has taken very drastic uh, steps and you know put the second lockdown even the you know uh, uh, mukherji you know his first uh, para said you know Uh, we were waiting for a third maze announcement if lockdown is extended what to be done how to be done for that purpose we will be coming back to you on the 4th uh, uh, may with another webinar where you know what will be the you know, situation what will be the steps to be taken for the third lockdown if announced by the government so with this word you know particularly i want to uh, highlight particularly uh, related to our work force and i want to introduce nihar takre to give a in brief you know the what are the suggestions given by the mr makran lele other than that how we can you know retain our workforce how we can support them how we can support them while their difficult time nihar over to you Nihar, you'll have to unmute your mic. Nihar, unmute your mic, please. Nihar, mic, come sir. Yes, go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, go ahead. Yes, go ahead, Nihar. All right, okay. Yes. Uh, so, like I was saying, uh, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, yes. Go ahead. Okay. So, uh, since I'm uh, I'm the last speaker, I will not take much time. I will uh, put my points uh, in brief. Now, uh, these are uh, definitely unprecedented times. Uh, these are difficult times, and uh, 
our entire country is not only facing a health crisis but also severe financial crisis so this is that i would be discussing in brief the impact of the covid-19 pandemic on the uh, corporate sector with special emphasis on employment related concerns uh, during and after the lockdown now as we know uh, the msmes uh, and the smes are one of the most important arms of the indian economy and uh, they together represent over 90 to 95% of all industrial units in india now in india we have around uh, 60 to 70 million msmes which is uh, providing uh, employment to almost 40% of our entire industrial workforce so this is a very important arm but uh, this is also uh, one of the most vulnerable arms uh, in the, in especially in uh, times like these where we have the covid-19 uh, situation we have the lockdown in force and uh, it is said that uh, if the lockdown continues this way uh, and if there are the financial crisis continue then 30 to 40% of the msmes may have to shut operations so obviously one important aspect which everyone is looking at is to reduce costs and to uh, control the cash flows and uh, amongst the different avenues so uh, one important avenues which the msmes are or smes are looking at uh nihar sorry to interrupt is, you are not able to see your presentation yes can, can you see now hello we are not able to see your presentation it's it's being shared as we speak can can't you see it yeah just we check can you see now so we uh, we are only able to see your uh, file there's a file so you'll have to okay. start and okay. that there is some issue then just give me a minute let me just rectify this or you can go ahead without the presentation we can share your presentation later on also okay just just give me a minute you already uh, is this visible yeah yeah now you can go ahead okay this format is visible okay uh seems to be some issue yes so uh, like i was saying one of the avenues which uh, the msmes are looking at is uh, payment deductions layoffs and uh, terminations so uh, while these are uh, important aspects uh, one must always remember that uh, there are various employment laws in the country which govern these aspects and there are various uh, government orders uh, which have been passed uh, due to the lockdown Uh, orders have been passed by the central government uh, orders have been passed uh, by the concerned state government so these are all important aspects which must be considered before any deduction of payments are done now one important order uh, uh, which has been passed by the ministry of home affairs so government of india is the order dated 29th march uh, 2020 and uh, this order this particular order has been passed under the disaster management act and uh, this order says and uh, rather directs all employers to not deduct the payment of the wages of their workers during the lockdown and uh, the same should be paid on time without any delay and i quote the relevant uh, paragraph of that uh, particular order it says all the employers may it be in the industry or in shops and commercial establishments shall make payment of wages of their workers at their workplaces on due date without any deduction for the period their establishments are under closure during the lockdown so this is one important aspect which has to be remembered there is another resolution which has been passed by the government of maharashtra on 31st march uh, 2020 uh, which has been made applicable to uh, public as well as private employers and again the resolution directs employers to not deduct uh, payment of uh, wages to their workers during the uh, lockdown uh, period now what is to be understood is that uh, whether this these orders are applicable to each and every employee then the answer is no these uh, orders are not applicable to each and every employee uh, there are certain employees which are uh, exempted from uh, the application of these orders especially your uh, managerial or administrative level employees 
there are certain uh, supervisory level employees which are uh, exempted so to understand which are the exact employees uh, which fall under this criteria and whose uh, payments cannot be deducted or whose wages cannot be deducted you may have to refer to uh, the industrial disputes act uh, which has uh, which has defined uh, workers workmen and uh, they are the workers which have to be considered so uh, anyone who is looking uh, into this avenue for deducting wages they could uh, seek appropriate legal advice uh, before the, uh, taking the necessary steps now another important aspect is that this particular order or these order which i uh, mentioned earlier have been passed under a disaster management act which has a penal provision so there is a punishment uh, for employers who are violating these orders and i quote the relevant uh, para paragraph of that order it is further directed that in case of violation of any of the above measures the respective state or union territory government shall take necessary action under the act now uh, what is the action that can be taken is provided under section 51b of the disaster management act and i quote whoever refuses to comply with any direction given by or on behalf of the central government or the state government or the national executive committee or the state executive committee or the district authority under this act shall on conviction be punishable with imprisonment for a term which may extend to one year or with fine or with both so this is very important to keep in mind there is a penal provision for uh, disobeying this order and if any employer deducts wages in violation of these orders could even face imprisonment so it is very important to seek proper legal advice before uh, taking any such steps now post lockdown situation now what are we looking at post the lockdown situation like i said these two orders um, are primarily enforced only during the term of the lockdown which which in simple words means after the lockdown is recalled uh, payments or wages due to these workers who are protected by these orders can also be uh, be deducted um now uh, at the time of deducting uh, wages of these workers after lockdown we have to uh, keep in mind that uh, there are several uh, employment laws which govern these aspects and uh, there are these uh, laws provide for different procedures which have to be mandatorily followed before reducing uh, payments for example you have your industrial disputes act uh, which uh, has a section 9a and i quote the relevant section no employer who proposes to effect any change in the condition of service applicable to any workman in respect of any matter specified in the fourth schedule shall effect such change without a without giving to the workman likely to be affected by such change a notice in the prescribed manner of the nature of change proposed to be effected or b without within 21 days of giving such notice so there is a mandatory notice of 21 days which has to be given there is a fourth schedule in the act which provides for all the conditions uh, which uh, if they are to be changed then the mandatory notice has to be given then you have laws like your minimum wages act which uh, empowers concerned governments to have uh, minimum criteria for payment of wages beyond which uh, wages cannot be deducted so again it's very important to uh, seek proper legal advice uh, after the post lockdown sc uh, scenario also at the time of deducting wages so that to make sure you are compliant with these orders with these laws now uh, this uh, these orders uh, which have been passed are pa have been passed to protect the right rights uh, um, of uh, workers however uh, on the other side uh, uh, there are employers who are facing practical difficulties so it is not viable for all smes msmes to keep paying wages uh, in 100% to all their uh, workers especially when they are in large numbers so there are some uh, companies some employers who have approached the honorable supreme court against these orders Uh, we've had uh, employers from ludhiana we've had employers from mumbai itself there's a textile company based in mumbai who has filed a, which has filed a petition before the supreme court challenging these orders uh, passed by the ministry of home affairs dated 29th uh, march and uh, the one passed by the maharashtra government uh, on 31st march and the petition says that these orders are arbitrary and uh, they are in violation of article 14 and article 19 of the indian constitution and uh, it is not practical for employers to keep paying wages without deduction especially when their businesses are not functional at all one important uh, question uh, which has been raised in that uh, particular petition is whether the government of india and the government of maharashtra is empowered to issue direction to private establishments like the petitioner to pay 100% wages under the disaster management act 
Now, what is to be uh, understood here is that Disaster Management Act per se does not deal with any employment-related concerns. There are employment-related laws like the Industrial Disputes Act, the Minimum Wages Act, and so on. So, uh, the powers which have been given to the government uh, under the Disaster Management Act are wide, and th these powers have been used to issue directions to uh, private individuals, private employers, regarding even employment. So, it has to be seen whether such orders are valid uh, in law, and it will be interesting to see what orders the Supreme Court passes, and uh, what is the way ahead for us. Looking ahead from your uh, post-lockdown situation, I believe there are some points which uh, the SMEs, the MSMEs should keep in mind and uh, should implement in their daily uh, work life. Uh, first of all, they should focus on health. I believe every SME should have a policy in place regarding health uh, in the post-lockdown and COVID situation wherein there are do's and don'ts for the employees. Control costs is one important aspect. Uh, since there is no clarity on which way the market is going to go uh, ahead, cost audits could be conducted to understand what are the inessential uh, costs which uh, the companies are undertaking and what can be avoided. Third important aspect is a uh, digital push. It is very important uh, for uh, SMEs to be uh, well acquainted with uh, technology in these times. 60% of our uh, SMEs, uh, MSMEs are still uh, uh, offline and are uh, working under traditional methods. So platforms like e-commerce should be explored, uh, especially by those who are into the manufacturing industry. Shorter targets are, again, important, I believe. Uh, there should be weekly reviews instead of long-term targets uh, to understand uh, business development. Representation by organizations is also important. Uh, like we've heard uh, Chandrakanji saying earlier, and uh, we have organizations, thankfully, we have organizations like the SME Chamber of India. Uh, who is providing representation before various uh, bodies of the governments uh, regarding various concerns raised by SMEs, MSMEs. So we should raise our concerns uh, to platforms like the SME Chamber of India and uh, due representation can be made to the government. And finally, what is important is to be human. Now I understand there is a financial difficulty faced by a lot of SMEs um, and uh, avenues are being explored like deduction of payment, uh, termination of employees, layoffs. Obviously, there are laws to that effect which have to be, uh, 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 you know, uh, which uh, the provisions have to be complied with. However, it is important to be human and even understand the aspect of workers and their uh, what impact it will have on their uh, lifestyle and families. So, unless it is uh, absolutely essential, such measures should not be taken. And finally, uh, we come to uh, some uh, opportunities which uh, we, India is looking at. Uh, like it said, in every adversity, there is an opportunity. And I believe uh, this COVID situation can also be an opportunity for India in the future. Uh, we have seen uh, the position in China. A lot of uh, companies, foreign companies, are uh, looking at pulling out of China and looking at other, other alternatives. India is one such alternative. Uh, from what we've heard in uh, reports of uh, news channels, over a thousand foreign companies are looking to reach out to India. 300 of such companies are in active talks with the government and are pursuing uh, plans to uh, shift their base to India. These companies are uh, involved in various sectors like mobiles, electronics, medical devices, textiles, synthetic fibers, and so on. So this is, uh, again, a good opportunity for MSMEs to uh, uh, take it up. Startups are uh, looking uh, to uh, move to India. A lot of startups who are in China uh, are looking to move to India. So again, all these uh, aspects would generate more employment and would boost the economy. Some big names which are looking to move out of China are uh, Apple's manufacturing partner, Bistron Corporation. We have Pegatron, uh, which assembles iPhone, which is again looking to move out of India. So, uh, sorry, out of China. Uh, from Korea, we have companies like Costco and Hyundai Steel who are looking to uh, uh, come to India. Recently, we've also seen big partnerships uh, happening uh, between uh, big companies like Facebook and Geo, which is again a positive news. So all this aspect could be beneficial uh, if the government takes the right uh, steps at the right time and ensures that these companies come to India, which will obviously boost the economy and generate much uh, uh, a lot of employment uh, for the days to come. So in the meantime, uh, I believe uh, we should stay positive and hope for the best and uh, keep having such webinars where uh, ideas and uh, information is shared. Uh, with this, I come to the end of my uh, short presentation and uh, I'm giving my uh, email ID here. If there are any, any any queries, you could reach out to me. I've also given my firm's uh, website where you could reach, to, uh, uh, using which you could reach to us. 
and thank you for your time and uh, back to you uh, chandrakant ji thank you you are very interesting and important information given by you uh, there are so many entrepreneurs are having doubts uh, particularly for their retaining their workers or they are paying their salaries and all these things so this is one and second thing you now there are uh, issues come up now questions are also coming about particularly for this uh, related to your topic so i will share with you that topic uh, the uh, questions and you know mostly uh, mihir nihar or makranji or mr say these are all experts are giving very very useful and very you know, interesting information to entrepreneurs particularly you know the uh, running business means you have to you know keep an eye on what are the compliances you are doing if the compliance is not proper then ultimately your business in the problem so one mr bharat shah has mentioned that you know so many issues so many issues we know that we want solution so these all the speakers are providing solutions solutions which is you know rectifying your business solutions to resolve your issues solutions for you know business growth solutions for a particular for business transformation um uh, mr robin baraji had given a very very interesting uh, talk about particularly business transformation business transformation is now need of power because business restructuring business transformation and business regeneration is a very very important for the coming days and i hope that sme sector will adopt this strategy and will you know adopt this strategy into enhance business tap the new business opportunity and while doing this you know we pay the gst and we will do doing the business we think that you know we have to pay taxes taxes is you know useful for the the nations development nations grow entrepreneurs are rather not taking any salary from the government but ultimately they are paying uh, the taxes to the government to run the, uh, the nation so coming to the point of gst when we think about gst i remember always in 24 hours shailesh shailesh bhai shailesh said Shailesh said is very very you know solid person from the you know GST point of view, particularly from the law and particularly from the you know legal point of view. So I welcome uh, Shailesh Bai to give you uh, your, your insight, particularly you know to to understand the entrepreneurs those are you know not having the knowledge about particularly the depth knowledge about the GST. We pay GST, that's it, but we don't know what is our consultant is doing, what is our uh, our uh, uh, you know. chatter account is doing particularly what is a suggestion you want to give how entrepreneurs which should keep an eye what is a development happening in my business what is my consultant is doing how my accountant is taking care of my work and mostly what are the government has announced particularly the benefit of the you know semi sector manufacturing industry particularly any entrepreneurs from the uh, gst perspective welcome uh, shailesh bhai over to you thank you Your voice is not there. Can you unmute uh, your mic? Unmute your mic. Please un unmute your mic. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Salonke, for your kind and appreciative words. Uh, it's a tough time to speak on a GST on a webinar uh, when we are almost approaching the lunch hours. Uh, we uh, lot lot many field to take over. My previous learned speakers uh, have. Uh, dealt with the topics in their own uh, perspective and uh, given many useful hints and insight into the particular subject we are all now facing the debilitating impact of the covid 19 19 on the businesses economy as a whole is bearing the brunt as we are now witnessing particularly post lockdown which has become absolutely inevitable and we are actually seeing the the fruitfulness of this particular bold step uh, taken by the honorable pm the economic activities have come to stand still msme sector is probably one of the if not one of the in my personal opinion is the worst hit sectors sector because of this inherent structural constraints a recent survey says 25% of the 6.90 msme units across the country may be facing ultimately the complete shutting down shutters down uh, if the lockdown is continued yeah yeah i think mahesh uh, he lost his uh, internet looks like 
We have lost his connection. So please go ahead. I think, uh, friends, uh, there is some technical errors, uh, technical issues uh, coming up now. Uh, Mr. Seth uh, has lost his uh, connection. Uh, we'll wait for a few seconds. Mahesh, you can try, you can call him and just check whether he can join again. Because yes. he's a very important speaker. So, till then, uh, Nihari has a one question in... Uh, okay, Nihari can go ahead. I think he's back. I think Sarajwa is back. Or okay. even, uh, uh, Bihir, if you want to add something. Sir, I think Sarajwa is back, sir. Just I think I see his connection. Okay, Sarajwa, you can start again. Challenge by, we can continue. Nihar, meanwhile, you can take a question. Nihar, you mute your, un 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 unmute your mic. Okay, okay. There is one question which I can see is uh, we are currently working under permission for pharma material essential items. My question is to Nihar, uh, can we deduct wages of workers who are not able to come in spite of notice given to them? Now, there is another uh, response to this by Mr. Karthik regarding uh, uh, circular in Gujarat, uh, which, is, which has been issued by Gujarat government uh, for employees who are not coming even after uh, notice. So that has to be looked into, but I presume uh, this particular question relates to Maharashtra. And uh, the uh, the issue is the uh, circular dated thirty first March is a widely inter inter interpreted uh, circular, and which says uh, deduction should not happen. They have not classified uh, if someone is coming or if someone is not coming. So uh, what the best thing to do is to get uh, more clarity on this, and uh, we need to see what the Supreme Court has to pass. Uh, like in, where there are petitions which have been filed in the Supreme Court. So if these orders are set aside, then we are completely free to uh, deduct wages um, for those employees who are not coming. However, uh, even if we are permitted to deduct wages, if that order is set aside, we have to follow provisions of the uh, various employment laws. If there is a mandatory notice period, regardless of the reason, you have to give the notice period. Um, those provisions have to be followed. So the best thing for now uh, is to wait and see uh, what orders the Supreme Court passes. I'm sure the order would be coming soon because this is a, a question which is uh, of great importance. Is there anything else that we could take up? Uh... Yeah, Nihar, there is one another question for you. Can you just elaborate on the sectors which companies are looking to invest in India, if possible, as of now? Sorry? There is a one question from Mr. Kapil Batra. Just refer to the chat. Okay. Uh, there is one question which I can see is from Mr. Anand uh, Doshi. What is your opinion on the payment of wages? Do you agree with the view of the government? If not, can the same uh, SME body not take this issue with the government authorities? Now, what has to be understood here is uh, the government... I mean, if you take my personal view, then even if you deduct some percentage, like say 25% or 30% of the wages and still uh, uh, protect your finances, uh, it will be a good uh, way of going ahead with it. Because even if you deduct wages uh, up to a certain percentage, it will still ensure that the workers' family survives. But to mandatorily force uh, private employers to pay 100% wages, and especially when the businesses are not uh, functioning, it's not uh, a very just um uh, order that the government has come up with. They have to consider uh, aspects and uh, they have to consider the problems faced by the employer as well. Especially MSMEs, MSCs, they don't have uh, like uh, a lot of financial st stocked up. So uh, it is not practically possible for employers to uh, pay 100% uh, salaries. So it's not a very good order and I hope uh, the Supreme Court passes some reliefs uh, in the times to come. And yes, uh, like like you like you said, uh, uh, like I said earlier, also uh, MS, uh, the SME Chamber of India is uh, an option available for us to take up issues. So we can write our concerns to uh, Chandrakanji to SME Chamber of India, and uh, we are sure uh, a due representation would be made before the concerned governments. In this case, uh, this order was passed by the uh, by the Minister of Home Affairs. 
So I'm sure something uh, can be, uh, you know, uh, the SME chamber can take this issue up with the Minister of Home Affairs. They could also take it up with the Maharashtra government, who has also passed the second uh, subsequent uh, notice. Um, so yes, uh, that's the way forward, uh, which I which I think, in my opinion. Okay. Uh, anything, Mihir? You want to add something? Uh, I'm good, sir. I okay. I just I was reading few tags and some questions. Uh, friends, let me clarify. There is no restriction on export or import of goods to any country. So whether you want to export goods to China or you want to export goods to uh, Malaysia or USA, whatever the country is, there's no restriction on the country segment. There is obviously certain restriction on the products. So your export of ventilators, masks, things which are going to be used at the moment in the COVID situation, those products have been restricted. But if you have a normal item which has been exported, there is no restriction on import or export from any country. Uh, it is all up to you from where you want to source and is your source, uh, if your supplier available to deliver to you the goods, there is no problem whatsoever. So I think that was one of the questions which I could uh, look at uh, various chat options. Uh, whether you want to export non-woven fabric. So non-woven fabric, I don't see an issue there uh, unless it is considered only exclusively raw material for the masks. But if it is not only for the masks, if it's a general non-woven product, I don't think that there's an issue. Uh, somebody mentioned about some certification with EIA. Uh, my suggestion to you is if there's a pendency on a certification and there's a lockdown, I'm sure uh, if it's a Mumbai office, they would have their contact numbers, which is one as Pilot House at Andheri. Uh, you might want to try their contact numbers and check with them or send an email and confirm with them uh, regarding your thing and you might get a soft copy of your certificate or your registration, uh, product registration which is pending for a long time. So I think these are the two uh, quick questions which I could run through. Uh, I am I'm probably hearing Salesh by joining back. So if he's available, I think we would want to hear him. Salesh bhai, if you are there, we want to hear you, sir. Yes, Salesh bhai is there. Salesh bhai, you'll have to unmute again, sir. Yes, go ahead, Shalish Bhai. Sir, you have to unmute, sir. Unmute your mic. Yes, go ahead. Shalish Bhai, go ahead. Shalish Bhai, you can go ahead now. Uh, yeah, okay. Sorry, there is some technical problem. No problem. Now, no, now uh, the the sector Speak loudly. Is, uh, Speak the loudly. Sector, uh, sector which is facing uh, facing the uh, you know the aftermath of the COVID nineteen and this uh, you know the devastating impact of the lockdown. Uh, lockdown uh, obviously, looks forward to the huge doses of the release of a right description. The this is like a, a serious ailment when only one particular medicine will not do. There could be a combination of medicines. It could be in the context of uh, the financial packages, the compliance related relaxations. It can be in the customs. It can be in the foreign poli uh, trade policy, which Mirwa has already covered. And GST obviously is one of the most potent medicines, which can, pro if, even if it cannot fully cure the. Uh, sector, but it can provide the, the desired immunity to the sector to remain afloat and then to recover very, very fully once the, we win this fight over this COVID-19, which we will. I'll just divide my overall talk into two parts. The relief measures which have already been announced till date and uh, in very short uh, time because of the time constraints, as well as what could further, what further developments uh, could be in the offing and what could be, what is desirable, what the government can really do, particularly for the MSME sector. The reliefs which have been announced are, as of now, are combination of mainly the compliance related issues, to some extent having some minimal financial impact, not much, I am, I regret to say. Let us take them one by one. I will not go into the technicalities of the notification numbers, or any such uh, sections and otherwise, uh, I'll just go by the description and the broad contours of the relaxations which have already been announced. 
this announcements follow the 39th uh, gst council meeting as well as the first media uh, press conference which was held jointly by honorable finance minister along with the state minister of finance and announcing the various reliefs this has been subsequently effectuated by the various notifications number uh, or issued on 3rd april 2020 just for the record sake it is 31 by 2020 to 36 by 2020 these are the notification we cover the amount of relaxations which have been announced taking first the gstr1 which is basically the outward supply return which is to be filed on a monthly basis and by the small uh, tax payers registered tax payers by on the quarterly uh, basis the there is a waiver of the complete late fee in if the monthly returns for march to may 20 or the quarterly return ending march i will re re repeat monthly returns for march 20 to may 20 or quarterly return for the quarter ending march 20 irrespective of the turnover if these returns are filed up to 30th june 2020 then the entire the late fee will not be chargeable on late filing of the return here one may keep it in mind that there is no extension of the due date only a condition of filing the return up to 30th june has been prescribed for the waiver of the late fee so if these returns for any of the months from march 20 to may or quarter ending march is filed beyond 30th june then late fee will be chargeable from the original due date till the date of filing the return please bear in mind there is no extension of due date but the waiver of late fee is made conditional on filing the return on or before 30th june for this specific period where the turnover is again is not a criteria coming to the gstr 3b which is basically where uh, through which you really discharge uh, which reflects the amount of credit available during the month as well as the tax payable and finally it is paid to the cash or paid to the debit to the input tax credit account there are uh, a sort of a cobweb of the relaxations announced because it is of the different different descriptions it is a turnover wise relaxation it is a state wise categorization making it a maze of the relaxation it is not a simple thing so let us listen to it very uh, look into it very carefully first of all there is a let us take about the waiver of interest and late fee i am now on gstr 3b the first category is the registered tax payers having a turnover of more than 5 crore in the preceding financial year these people above 5 crore the interest the for the period february to april not for may i repeat not for may for february 20 to april 20 they can file the return up to 24th june 2020 it means the liability would stand discharge on 24th june 2020 for february to april period uh, for the registered tax payer above 5 crore in that case there will be the interest liability will be of 9% with the total waiver of the late fee there is no waiver of complete interest the interest liability will be of 9% if the return is filed beyond original due date but before 24th june 2020 however uh, as a pleasant surprise with the honorable fm had not even announced in the speech there is a 15 days grace period given for this period so if the march return is to be filed say by 10th of april 2020 or by say 20th april uh, the april return is to be filed by say 20th may 2020 in that case i'm just giving a hypothetical date then first there will be a 15 days grace period up to 5th june if it is filed then there will not be any interest but provided it is filed up to 24th june however if it is filed beyond 24th june in that case interest at full applicable 18% rate will be charged right from the original due date till the date of filing 3b this is very important because there is again no due date extension here it is only a conditional waiver based upon 
the adhering to the due date, new, due, new date announced. By 24 June, it is to be filed by the taxpayers above 5 crore for a February 20 to April 20. In that case, up to 15 days there will no be. From the original due date by a grace period of 15 days, no interest liability. From the 16th day, till, suppose the taxpayer files it on 24 June, then from the 16th day of the up to 24 June, there will be interest liability of 9%. But if it goes beyond 24 June, then 18% interest will be levyable right from the original due date. Then the second is the taxpayer with a turnover between one and a half crore to five crore. Again, no interest. Here there is no interest liability and no late fee provided. These people file the return for February and March by 29th June. February and March by 29th June or April by 30th June. There is no interest liability and then there is no late fee. However, if this date is missed, then for each month, the interest liability and late fee will be computed from the original due date. Taxpayers with the below one and a half crore turnover, for February 20, the return can be filed up to 30th June without interest, without late fee. For March 20, 3rd July, without interest, without late fee. For April 20, 6th July, without interest, without late fee. In all these cases, is, friends, there is no extension of the due date. Please bear it in mind. And interest liability total waiver is only in respect of the below 5 crore turnover people subject to adhering to their uh, condition of filing the return by the particular date. But there is a 9% interest liability which is fixed upon the large, uh, above 5 crore large taxpayers. As far as the May 20 is concerned, again, there is a category, there is an extension of the due date. Now, this is very interesting. The new, there is a due date extension for May 20 for more than 5 crore. The new date will be 27 June. Less than 5 crore in certain specified states like Gujarat, Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, the Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, the MP, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, etc. The new date will be 12 July. And for other states, uh, which are the less, uh, the note, again, just to give you reference, 36 by 2020 central text, for less than 5 crore, situated within other states, the new date will be 14 July. So for May 20, there is an extension of due date, which are again three dates. One, above 5 crore, irrespective of the place of business, it will be 27 June. For certain specified states where the, uh, the registered expenses are located, it is 27, uh, 12th July. And for other states, it is 14 July. And if it is filed by this date, there is a uh, for May 20, uh, there is a there is, obviously there will not be any interest or late fee or whatever. But if it is filed beyond this, then again the interest liability and late fee will accrue. Coming to one of the most uh, headache rule which has been introduced in August 2019, and that is Rule 36.4, that is keeping the ITC availability to 10% of the reconciled or reflected invoices in the 2A in case. Any invoices of the vendors are not reflected in 2A. This is this rule. I may clarify this rule validity of this rule is already under challenge before the various high courts. Be that as it may, this 10% capping of the credit has been put on in sus, on suspension for the period from February 20 to August 20. For February 20 to August 20, the taxpayer, irrespective of the class irrespective of the state and irrespective of the turnover, need not apply this mandate of keeping the credit at 10% of the reconciled credit in case of any invoices not reflected on the 2A for February to August. However, for the month of September 20, when the return is, 3B return is filed at that time, the, for the entire February 20 to September 20, cumulatively, the effect of the 10% capping will have to be taken into account by the tax I think uh, Shailesh Bhai again lost his uh, 
network. Uh, hello, friends. So, so is there any uh, any uh, uh, question to answer by Mihir or uh, Mr. Lele? Also, also, if I could add, uh, there is. Uh, one, uh, Mr. Karthik has said there's a government notification by the Gujarat government. It permits the production of wages for employees, uh, for workers who are not coming to work. Now, what has to be understood is that this could be a conflict with the order passed by the uh, Minister of Home Affairs, which is a central government body. And uh, since uh, employment uh, is a concurrent uh, matter, which which means orders can be passed by centre as well as the state. And if there is a conflict, then obviously the orders passed by the central central government would prevail. So again, uh, do not rush into uh, deducting wages. I think a proper legal uh, advice should be sought even uh, in case of workers in Gujarat. Okay. Yes. I I think uh, Mr. Lele, I would like to suggest uh, all of you. Uh, I will also talk to Shailesh by later on. Yes, sir. Uh, four things. One, why don't you create one FAQ? FAQ on export import. What is the uh, you know current situation? How the entrepreneurs will understand? Similarly, uh, Mukherjee, you can also prepare. Niharji, you can also prepare FAQ. Even uh, Shailesh by on GST point of view, because you know a lot of entrepreneurs are having uh, many doubts. You know, they have uh, issues and problems, but how we can provide them solutions? So I suggest all of you on behalf of SME Chamber to, you know, to give the FAQs from the SME entrepreneurs, particularly to understand easy way. Because most of the entrepreneurs are not understanding the compliances part, but they can do, they can they grow their business, they can use the technology, they can use the you know, value addition services for a business growth. But somehow, some points on the compliances part, they are not understanding. They have to rely on their profession. And I want to suggest all the entrepreneurs from the SME sector or from manufacturing industry or exports, I think you should take a guidance from regularly from your experts. The experts, the you know, legal firms, advisors, particularly the experts from the industry uh, segment. So this is a very, very important for you to, you know, to transform your business, improve your business. And mostly, you know, government is looking what business ethics you're adapting. What kind of, you know, the governance you're adapting for your running your business. With this was, I'm thankful to all the speakers who have shared their knowledge and, you know, the particular, the, you know, points which is useful for the entrepreneurs. And I request the, all the participants, those are in line on the, those are now listening by audio on the Facebook also, share your questions, share your issues and problems so that, you know, we can include an FAQ and it will be good for you to understand the proper uh, proper uh, uh, way to you know to to run your business and i hope that you know uh, uh, to request the honorable prime minister to not to extend a lockdown to open uh, the uh, the economy and to you know to give us some particular breathing uh, space to start our business with this word i'm thankful to all of you thanks for to thank to all the you know, participants those are joined today thank you Thank I you, look sir. forward to see you soon again in the Thank SME you. jobs because most of the SMEs are you know, using the various concepts, various technology, very unique ideas to run their business. So next time will be the SME talks. The experience and knowledge and you know, particularly the what kind of uh, uh, the quality uh, development they are adopting. So with this word, I'm thankful to all of you. Thank you very much to all of you. And thanks to my uh, IT team and my chamber team for uh, providing the very good platform to my uh, speakers as well as my delegates. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Okay.